Okay, Lamont the fan man. Here's how you oil this pig. I've never taken this fan apart before, so it should be interesting. Although I've taken this very annoying grill off. Okay, back to the floor. Okay. Okay, well, first thing, just taking the blade off. And that's actually pretty simple. You just loosen that up. It will obviously be tighter than that, but. And bam! There's the blade. It's like a mirror. We'll just set this right here. Here's the motor. Oh, look at this. I've never seen this sticker before. Hmm. Well, maybe I did, but I forgot about it. These friggin' twist tie things. I gotta cut them. Completely destroy them with my skizzer. Kind of proven to be a somewhat tough job. Oh, there we go. Hmm, not too bad. Wires flexible. I can already tell that with this motor, I won't be able to remove this cover because, as you can see, the wire chooches in there. And that'll be hooked up to the winding that's right under this cover. And yeah, you could try and, like, you know, whittle it turn it, force it, try to get this cover up on this wire ways, but I wouldn't because you may accidentally ruin the connections in the windings. And I overemphasize the importance of not hurting the windings at all because, well, for one, they are really easy to hurt. I've done it before and, you know, it just totally kills the fan, especially if I'm like this and paid friggin' $90 for the thing poop this off of here. Well, these things are kind of tough to get off sometimes. I do not like taking them off. Oh, look at that. That kind of worked. Oh, fudge cakes. Okay, well, here's my newest dilemma. I need a tripod. Partially off there, just... Oh, wow. Oh, there we go. And just for the poop of it, I want to turn it on with no blade on. Because I like to do things like that. Oh, I can't stop it. That's got a little bit of power to her, anyways, on high. Oh, whoops. You gotta remove all four of these nuts behind the motor here. And then you'll get the motor free, and then you remove yet another nut right at the engine cover there. So you can see that the screws and nuts holding the motor together are still on there. I just removed the nuts that were at the back holding the motor onto the grill. Doesn't have that thick of a stator, but just the circular size of it there is pretty large. Yeah, this is crappy because, like, I don't really want to just hang it here. Well, holy jumping Jemima. I can feel oil on this shaft and, like, Kind of all over around the bearing here. I think this manufacturer actually put oil in these bearings. Every other fan that I've took apart has all been packed with grease in their sleeve bearings. In which we know already that sleeve bearings don't like grease. Just go grab one of your heaters that you have lying around there and set your motor up. Now I'm going to take off all these bad boys. Grab your handy dandy scissor. Give that a quick snip. It'll work great as a camera prop. Look at that. That's my tripod. Got this one started already here. So I'll just continue taking that off. And I just noticed something else here. The nut that actually holds the motor together is bigger than the one that holds the motor to the grill. So don't mix those up. Thank you. 
put up in my pliers. Way over there. She's ready to pull apart. I'm going to clean around this shaft first though. I mean I hardly even use this fan but there's still dust sitting all over it. There's just so much dirt in my shop it's not even funny. I guess plus I leave the ceiling fans on a lot to keep the birds out and stuff so that circulates dust around too. Should be pretty good. By the way Lamont the fan man, let your fan break in before you oil it. I'm not even going to oil it right now, I'm just basically just tearing it apart just to show you what what to do and what it's like and all that jazz, you know, and for other people who are watching this. And we'll split this bad boy. Move your heater out of the way for this, and your nuts and bolts and all that. It's a little stuck together, but kind of really stuck together. Oh! She's coming apart now. <clears throat> Except the front plate is coming off, and that's the one I don't want to pop off. I want the back one to come off here. Oh, frig a sack. Ooh, but it did. Huh. Okay, so that's what your stator and stuff will look like. Here's the rotor. I'm sorry, I'm not going to take this rotor out. Because I'd have to sand right where that ring is. Because that's, that's where she's stopping. Well, it doesn't go past that. And like I said in my other videos, you don't want to force it. You'll totally destroy that bearing. And I simply don't feel like sanding it because it takes forever and I don't even have to oil it, so. But yeah, these bearings were oiled at the manufacturer. That's amazing. That's about the first fan I, well, other than my Honeywell stand fan, it's it has oiled bearings too. Usually they're all greased. And a couple spacers which you want to take off and clean but I'm not gonna because I'm not gonna oil it I'm still gonna let this fan break in some more I mean I hardly even use this thing I had it on for about a half an hour when I first bought it and then put it in the shop to make the video of it it was running probably for a total of roughly 45 minutes there and that was all I ever used this thing so I want to give her at least like a summer of use before I oil it. I might not even ever oil it because it doesn't really need it. It's already oiled. Those bearings will keep that oil in them for quite a long time. But they probably weren't oiled that great so maybe they'll eventually dry out and start sounding dry and all that stuff and I can oil it then. What I'd do for this one is it has a cap at the bottom there. So I just fill that right full with oil, like, like overfill the actual sleeve bearing and just fill up around it where the wick is and like the holders for the bearing, just so you'd soak that wick up real good too. This side, it's not a, it doesn't have a cover on this side because the rotor shaft comes out that side. So I'd take this rotor out after sanding that sh rotor shaft, soak up my cloth here or whatever with oil and get it in there, get it through the sleeve bearing, just like you've seen in my Let's Tear It Apart videos. And then just pour some around where the wick is, get that wick soaking up some oil and there you go. But, let me get some shots of the stator here. I've got to say, that's not too half-assed bad a quality. Vintage industrial fans would have a stator of at least that big. 
So, like, I'm not bragging this thing up or anything, but I'm just saying. <laughs> now, this wire is of a decent gauge. It's kind of between uh, regular fans windings and um, electric motors windings. You can see those are pretty low gauge wires there. It seems like a half decent quality motor. Oh, I wonder if there's anything else I should point out. Oh yeah, it's not even unplugged. You should have your things unplugged when you work on them. Although in this case it's to go but like you know I don't want to get sued if you get electrocuted okay time for reassembly just line that up with gentle care click it all into place there It's raining as you can hear. We're getting really cold weather for this time of the year. It's it's June now and it's only plus eight degrees Celsius out right now. Last night it got to plus one. So much for global warming. This one's being difficult. Yeah, it turns out I do have to go to work, but not until 6, so got a little time to play with some fans. <laughs> okay, now let's batten her down. I mean, you don't have to tighten the crap out of these things. Just nice and firm. And always tighten them up uh, in the order I'm doing it. Like from here, here, and then here to here. Because then that just ensures that these covers are tightened down evenly. Okay, took it all apart, and yeah, all my rings were in place, but I just simply over tightened this. Now I basically just kind of snugged them up. Fires up on low, no problem. And on high, it just. No problem at all, so. Slap her back in there. And the washers and all that jazz lined up. I kind of forgot that these nuts holding the motor on here wouldn't even have to be hardly tight at all because being secured on with this extra nut over here just would hold it all together anyway so it doesn't need to be tightened right up. here. I'm pretty sure this wouldn't even have to be tight either. Let's ensure our motor hasn't been affected by tightening those up. Nope. Still golden. Don't forget about your blade support ring here. Just about. There we go. No. Blade reassembly. Now there will be a groove here. You see that? 
Well, this screw has got to be right in that groove for it to work good. So you just line that up perfectly there. And it's got little bumps on the side usually so you can kind of get her hand tightened and uh, play with it a little and get it on there perfect. Go like that so you make sure that the screw is perfectly tightened on flat on that groove. I don't want your blade getting loose and flying off on you. Give that a good secure bat in there. And she should be good to go. Start her off on high. Yep, still good to go. At least I didn't wreck it. No, that heater is not on. Oh, she's uh, moving around on me here. Got a mind of its own. Well, thanks for watching.